Well, it's been a while, but since America's going fucking crazy, it's long overdue that I do this podcast. It's time to talk about Trump, the myth of white supremacy, and what's really happening in America. Buckle up. This ain't gonna be pretty. Welcome to the Black Renaissance, motherfucker. Welcome to the Smart Black People Podcast, the number one podcast worldwide for intelligent, ambitious, critical thinking black people who reject the coonery, buffoonery, and general dumb shit in black imagery presented in American media. Now, here's your host, uncensored and untamed as always, author, investor, rebel entrepreneur, and the bad boy genius himself, Harkan Ajala. All right, what's up? What's up, people? It's your man, Harkon Ajala, a.k.a. The Bad Boy Genius. This is the Smart Black People Podcast. It's been a while since my last episode, and I want to let you know, I appreciate everybody that's reached out to me to say, hey, man, when the fuck are you putting out a new episode? Some of you know who are close to me that I was in a car accident with my wife and my son. Uh, everybody's okay, but it just took a while for things to get back to an equilibrium, had to go through some therapy, etc. Anyway, though, Here's, here's the thing. I mean, if you look at the news, everybody's talking about white supremacy. There's been fucking countless mass shootings in America this year. As I record this podcast, there were three in the past seven days. That's fucking insane. And, and the reason white supremacy comes up is because, well, for one, your president, not mine, your president, Donald J. Trump, Um, has been dogged with uh, his unrelenting, (laughs) you you can't say out and out support, except he has out and out supported people who are white supremacists. But he has an unrelenting hesitance to just disavow white supremacy. He just came out in a speech and finally said, oh, I'm against it. But it rang very inauthentic and hollow and um, we, we can't overlook the fact that since Trump got in office, white supremacists, quote unquote, have seemingly come up from the sewer and are going fucking ape shit in America. Like hasn't been seen overtly in quite some time. Um, so many of the uh, mass shooting perpetrators. Or should I say, quote unquote, suspects. <laughs> So many of the mass shooting perpetrators have basically been avowed white supremacists that, you know, people are starting to get uncomfortable, uh, particularly Republicans and conservatives, because they also are all seemingly avowed Republicans, conservatives, and especially supporters of Donald J. Trump. So, you know, that old saying about you know, when you lie down with dogs, you come up with fleas. Birds of a feather flock together. Um, it's getting harder and harder for old Don to duck and a lot of other people. I mean, this latest fucking mass shooting suspect, quote unquote, actually had pictures of Trump spelled out in machine guns and, and, and pistols and shit on his Facebook page. I mean, he was a very strong, avow- strongly avowed supporter of Donald Trump. Uh, he had all this anti-immigrant shit and shit about invasions, immigrant invasions, and he's trying to kill as many Mexicans as possible. Look, all of this shit has been fanned by your president, Donald J. Trump. That is undeniable. The only people who try to deny that are Trump supporters and people in the Republican Party who have kind of hitched their wagon to him and are trying to ride the thing out. That is objective truth, okay? You've seen the YouTube videos of Trump rallies, especially during the election where they were, you know, punching black people and calling people niggers and you fucking Mexican beaners get out of here, all kinds of shit. So all this is shaped up as this so-called war against white supremacy. We have to fight the white supremacists. And here's the truth of it. Um, All of that, the intentions may be good, but it's really misguided because white supremacy, as it is 
referenced in America today is a myth. It's a complete myth. Now, it might shock you when I say that, but let me be clear. It doesn't mean white, that doesn't mean white supremacy doesn't exist. Oh, it's alive and well. Trust me. You are seeing the overt evidence of that right now every time you turn on your Facebook feed or you go to YouTube or if you watch CNN or Fox News or whatever. Every time you go to the media, you're seeing that now. But let me tell you this. You've been seeing it all along. You just probably didn't recognize it. Because you see, the way white supremacy really works If you understand that, you understand what's happening in America and what's been happening in America, because the way people conceive of white supremacy today is a myth. The way people conceive of white supremacy and white supremacists in 2019 America are crazy white people who are yelling out nigger and spick and wetbacks and kikes and all other manner of racial epithets who are marching somewhere saying white people are superior or yelling white power or saying go back to Africa, go back to Mexico, go back to your country or give me my country back or make America great again. (laughs) Sorry, but those two things always go together, right? Um, They're on 4chan or 8chan or wherever it is spouting nonsense about white people being superior and other races of humans being uh, inferior, et cetera, et cetera. And what this is, what, what happens is it has allowed a whole lot of people, a whole lot of people, especially white people to, and this has been going on throughout the history of America. It's allowed a whole lot of people to falsely claim to not be white supremacist by saying, oh, you don't see me doing that. You haven't seen me saying things like that. I think that's ridiculous. I think that's abhorrent. So I'm not white supremacist. I'm not racist. I'm not prejudiced, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is a game, by the way, it's been being played in America since the inception of America, since the stealing of America, if you want to put it that way. Since the creation of America, people have been playing this game. And race has always been a fucking hot button uh, (laughs) stick of dynamite in America. It's always been a stumbling block and it always will be until we learn to view it in context objectively and through the lens of history. See, one of the reasons that people don't understand white supremacy is because people in America One of the games that is played is to look at everything out of context, not in the context of the entire history of America and what has happened, but in the context of today. So, you know, people like to play this game in America. This is how people play this game. Um, Imagine you have a 1000 yard race. You have a 1,000 yard racetrack and you have all these different people lined up across it. Now, I want you to imagine that they fire the starting pistol, pow! And first, white men take off running, but nobody else can run. Only white men take off running. This is the beginning of America, okay? White men take off running. They run about 300 yards. Okay, then they fire the gun again. White women start running. White women take off running. White men are still running ahead. They run about 200 yards. Then they fire the gun again. Now white immigrants, Jewish people, etc. Take off running. They run about 200 yards. Now at this point, remember. At this point. White men are like 700 yards down the way. Now they fire the gun and black men and women get to take off running. Then, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. They fire the gun and then Asians get to take off running. 
They run for about 100 yards. Then they fire it again. Then black people get to run along with Mexicans. And you can go right down the line. Now, um, let's talk about this. By the time black people start running down the race, white men are maybe 900 yards down. I mean, and if we're being honest, they've already passed the finish line and they're moving on to the other race. Now, let's take that up to about 2019. So trying to deal with this in 2019 is like people saying, OK, stop everybody where you are now. Let's deal with the inequality, the systemic inequalities, the, the, the economic inequalities, the racism, the sexism, the, the, the fucking uh, xenophobia. Let's deal with all of that right now based on from where everybody is. And now black people, why the fuck are you so far behind? Mexicans, why are you so far behind? Because now... You know, everybody's the same. We're treating everyone the same. So why is everybody behind? Why are you trying to play the race card and say that it's not your fault? It's someone else's fault. Why are you trying to say that white people have a privilege, have an advantage? I don't have any advantage. You have the same rights as me in this race. You can do everything that I can do. Only you've been running the fucking race for a thousand yards. Before somebody else even got started. You see. That. Is the context of how everybody tries to talk about. The big social issues in America. Racism. Sexism. Xenophobia. Anti-immigrants. Ism. I guess you'd call it that right. That's the context everybody tries to deal with it in. As just today, just this moment, as if the whole last 300 fucking years never happened, as if all of that doesn't matter. So you say, why the hell won't you bow for the flag? You're an American. Just like I am. I fought for you in the war. My grandfather fought for you in the war. So you can say things like that if you take out the context that in World War Two. Fucking black people, they, this is still crazy to me. Black people had to actually fight to get into the military to go fight, quote unquote, for a country that they were still segregated and treated as second class citizens in. A country that still called them niggers, wouldn't let them drink from the same water fountain. Black people actually fought to go die in war, quote unquote, for that country of America. And in the military, they were fucking segregated. It's amazing. They were discriminated against in the military, even when they were laying down their lives, quote unquote, for this country. See, you can say dumb shit in 2019 when you try to blank it out and white out the last three, 400 years and what's happened. And that is how people deal with the idea of white supremacy in 2019. We're all Americans and, and, and they deal, try to deal with it in the context of the way things are today. But, you know, Toni Morrison, who just recently died, rest in peace, rest in honor, rest in power. Toni Morrison, one of the greatest uh, writers and thinkers to ever live and be born on American soil. Toni Morrison said it best. She said, American means white. American means white. Everybody else has to hyphenate. Think about that. Because it cuts right to the truth of what white supremacy really is, friends. American means white. Everybody else has to hyphenate. You see, African American, right? Native American, Indian American, Asian American. But you almost never hear anybody say, yes, uh, Tom Brady is an incredible white American quarterback. Do you? He's an incredible American quarterback.
Look, Dr. Frances Cress Wilson talked about this in her book, The ISIS Papers, 30 years ago. Public Enemy talked about it on their album, Fear of a Black Planet. This shit ain't new. People who are informed and willing to actually research have known what this was all about for years, for decades. White people even get angry at the hyphenates. Why are you calling yourself something that uh, other than American? Well, you started that, not us. You started calling us and everybody other than white people something other than American, my friend. Go back and look in history. But you see, that is how it happens. That's how it works. That's the technology. That's the game that's played in order to reverse the onus of America's racial problem onto the very people who have always been the victims of the race problem in America to somehow put the onus on black people, on Asians, on Mexicans, on Native Americans. The onus is on us. But you see, again, that's white supremacy. It's always somebody else other than white people who are supposed to change, adapt, assimilate in order to be accepted. So let's look at it in the context of history. And let me explain to you what white supremacy really is, because when you understand what it really is, like I said before, you understand exactly what the fuck's going on in America, what has gone on in America, what to expect in America going forward. Why Donald J. Trump, the most unqualified motherfucker to ever run for office, so much so that it was a joke. Why Donald J. fucking Trump was elected president. And now after the fucking shit show, objectively objectively okay everybody but a trump supporter now if you're a trump supporter i hope you'll continue to listen because you need to hear this as much as anybody else but you probably won't other than a trump supporter objectively donald j trump after almost three years his fucking presidential his presidency and administration has been the biggest clusterfuck probably in the history of the world, not just America. I mean, to make a movie about it would require four hours and, and you'd have to wait another year and a half if he makes it, if he's able to finish it to even see how much fucking crazier and fucked up and absolutely incompetent it may get. And yet here we are almost three years into it and there are people in America, many people in America who still, and probably rightfully so, are worried about him being reelected. Do you know why? White supremacy, my friends. Let me ask you a question. Let's just be real about it. If Barack Obama, I'm just going to pick out one thing, just one thing. If Barack Obama had had five or six people who were part of his administration, fucking indicted three of them sent to prison do you think there would be any doubt about whether or not he'd be reelected let's be real about it what if hillary clinton had been elected you think that shit had happened there'd any been any doubt about her being reelected really do you because if you do i got some oceanfront property to sell you in cleveland <laughs> Look, let me explain to you what white supremacy really is so you can understand what's happening in America and you can understand not necessarily how you can fix it. It takes a lot to fix it and it may not even happen in our lifetime, but at least you know how to move so you can account for it and you can literally outmaneuver it. White supremacy is the basic belief that white people are superior and think about the word supremacy that white people are supreme that white people are supreme and preeminent and that they should be supreme and preeminent and given first 
and primary class status in every situation. Now think about that because see, to say white people are supreme is not quite the same thing as saying they're superior. There are plenty of white people who may not necessarily believe that white people are superior. As a matter of fact, and this gets into a whole nother deal, but I'll tell you this, especially as a psychologist, talk to psychologists and look at the behavior of a lot of white racists over the years. And that behavior suggests that they believe anything but whites and people are superior they actually believe white people are inferior, but that's a whole nother thing we can get into later from a psychological standpoint. But there are plenty of white people who probably don't necessarily believe they can honestly say, I don't believe white people are superior, but to say they believe white people are supreme should be uh, are supreme and, sh and preeminent and should be so is another thing entirely. That's like saying, I believe white people are the best at dot, 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 or at everything, dot, dot, dot. And they should be preeminent. They should be first. They should be featured. They should be the default. That's why there's no need to say white American because American defaults. The idea of American defaults to a white person. Okay. So people say, well, why do I got to be the best black director? Because best director, okay, defaults mentally to the best white director. You with me? And that's why that analogy I gave you of the race is so important. Because white supremacy, the reason that <laughs> the reason the things that are happening in America are happening right now is because you need to understand that white supremacy is not some group of dumb fuck uh, people in the goddamn uh, Tennessee mountains. Okay, burning crosses, you know, motherfuckers who can barely speak English, barely speak grammar, burning crosses or, you know, yelling white power. No bullshit like that going on. You know, little fucking nerd motherfucking cowards in their mom's basement typing on 4chan about how. White people are superior, but you hiding. But anyway, that ain't what it's about. White supremacy is an ideal and a concept and a belief system, a value system that is sewn into the very fabric and foundation of the United States of America. It is the belief system, value system that was that the entire American system, the entire concept of America was built on. If you don't believe that, if you want to, to debate that, go back and read the words of the so-called founding fathers. Those white dudes, why the fuck do you think black people were labeled as only three-fifths a human being in the Constitution that so many of you Love so much, love to all oh, the Constitution like it's a fucking holy document. It probably is for white men in particular and white people in general. But it didn't even it didn't even fucking include everybody else. See, the idea of white people as the as preeminent, supreme and the default human being is sewn into the very fabric of of America and it is still to, in 2019 communicated every single day in a million different ways it is expected it is accepted as the default as the way things are supposed to be that's why white men can have Fucking 85 Star Wars movies full of white people and then go ape shit when they make The Force Awakens and the first thing you see in the trailer is a black man's face and suddenly the racist white trolls come out onto the internet pitching a fucking bitch and hollering about social justice warriors ruining everything. Ruining everything by including other people other than the default people, 
white people. It's the reason why people can see everything white. Turn on the TV, see nothing but white people on the news programs, on fucking uh, How I Met Your Mother, on fucking Friends, on fucking Big Bang Theory. You could turn on, if you turn on the television, saw nothing but white people, and then you turned on CNN and they went to Congress and you saw nothing but white people. And then you went and watched your favorite white movie or you went and watched The Passion of the Christ, saw nothing but white people. You went and watched the story of the Bible, saw nothing but white people. You went into a church, saw nothing but white people on the walls. You looked at Donald Trump's uh, fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's funny to me. You looked at Donald Trump's rallies and saw nothing but white people. You went to the Republican National uh, Convention and saw nothing but white people. You turn on Fox News, see nothing but white people. You pick up a newspaper, see nothing but white people. You watch movies about the future with nothing but white people in them. And it doesn't bother you in the least. But if you went into a church and the church had all black saints and pictures of Jesus and God and Mary on the walls, if you turned on CNN or Fox News and there were all black anchors, there were if you and it showed a picture of Congress and there were all black people and Indians and Asians. If you went to a movie and it was all black people in the cast, if you went and saw a movie about the future and the whole cast was all black people. If you turned on coverage of a presidential campaign rally and there were all black people. If you went and you saw the Democratic National Convention and it was all black people. If you turned on the Academy Awards and there were all black people winning. If you turned on the Grammys and it were all black people winning, the Tonys, all black people winning, the Emmys, all black people winning, the blankety blank so-and-so entrepreneur of the year awards and it was all black people winning. You'd say, hey, what kind of church is this? Hey, what channel did I turn on? Is this BET? Did I take a wrong turn and end up in a quote unquote black church? Hey, are these the Soul Train Entrepreneur Awards? Is this the Black Panther Party political conference? Hey, what the fuck kind of nightmare is this? Did I wake up in an episode of the Twilight Zone? Is this a Jordan Peele movie? Why is everybody black? See, that would worry the fuck out of you. You'd be like, what the hell's going on? Because in your mind, and this is the American value system at work, that's not how it's supposed to be. That's not how it's supposed to be. Sure, black people, Asians, Indians, whatever. Yeah, they could be your doctor every now and then. They could be a police officer every now and then. They could be your attorney every now and then or an attorney or a, or a doctor, maybe not yours. They could occasionally be a senior, I mean, senator. Maybe they'll be a school principal here and there. Maybe even be president. They could be. Some of you take such pride in going, hey, it doesn't bother me at all. It would bother you if everybody was black, though. See, because it's not supposed to be that way. The way it's supposed to be is white people dominating. White people in the majority and everything. White people supreme and preeminent. White people's country. That's why you say you will not replace us. You say we want our country back. You say you're invading America. Immigrants are invading America. How ironic, how hilarious. Again, you can say shit like that when you don't take the context of history. You don't look at the context of history. 
considering how can you even say that considering that the fucking pilgrims the white people came over here and invaded america killed and took it from the native americans killed and took texas and arizona and whatever else from fucking mexico it's the way it's been but you see it's not seen as theft and invasion when white people do it because that's the way it's supposed to be they even had a name for it manifest destiny this was our manifest we are manifesting our destiny it is our destiny to have America, to have these lands. You know where that idea comes from? That comes from a concept of white supremacy. This is the way it's supposed to be. And that people is what white supremacy really is. Not the myth of some crazy skinhead motherfucker, you know, wearing some weird looking clothes and living in his mother's basement and screaming about socialist this and you know immigrants go home and you mexican beaners fix my taco and you niggers this that and the other nah what that is is a clown and a motherfucker that provides cover for everybody else that's the boogeyman you can point to so you can say well it's not me it's him i'm not racist you don't see me doing that I'm not white supremacist. My value system isn't white supremacist. I don't say things like that. Hell, I voted for Obama. Yay, but check this out. <laughs> Obama became president, but the rest of the Senate, the Congress, his cabinet, and everything else still say 99% white, didn't it? Now, if Obama had said sweet and fucking whole cabinet would have been black, no fucking way. No fucking way. Because that would be, it's not supposed to be that way. I'm trying to help you understand what white supremacy really is and why it's such a pervasive issue in this system. Because see, these are the things that people believe deep down Though they won't say it, some of them aren't even really aware that they believe it. This is why fucking black kids aged three years old, four years old, five years old, five years old in 2019, in 2019, will still say, given a choice between a black doll and a white doll, they will still say the majority of them, when you ask them which doll is the pretty one, they will still pick the white blonde doll. In 2019, go look the shit up. That's because of the white supremacist belief and value system still present in America, still running America, still underlying everything that happens in America and American media. The belief is that white is beautiful. And you know, some other people might be beautiful considering and taking into account how close they are to white. Yeah. Black women who are lighter skinned, have straighter hair, seen as prettier, right? Holly Berry and all the like. So how does all this really explain what's happening in America today? Well, you can kind of put two and two together. And I'll probably do a part two to this to really get in depth uh, about the, on this point. Because this is really another podcast in and of itself. But let me tell you the basics of it. Here's what's really fucking going on in America for the first time in American history, this system is no longer just working for white people like a fucking charm by default. Let me tell you, for the first time, a white person born in America is like, hey, I'm not guaranteed a pretty good fucking life. You go back to the 1950s, leave it to Beaver and all that shit like an average. All you need to be was a pretty just an average white dude. And white woman, and you're going to have a pretty good life. Just kind of go to high school, maybe go to college. You know, but if you didn't come out, go work somewhere, work your way up. You know, you'll get you'll get promoted just as a matter of how it goes down. You'll get promoted. You've been here five years, Tom. Um, done a good job. We're going to promote you. That's how it worked. Or you go to college, and then you come into an even better situation. And you just went to work, and you moved on up because that's how it went. And you 
you know, took your vacations and went home and had fun with your family and, and then you retired and lived out your days and left money for your kids and wealth and all that. And that was, you know, not a bad life for a white person. That's just an average white person, not a white person that was extraordinary and could get rich or whatever. But that's how it used to be in America. But you see, competition brings some other problems. That was because other people were artificially stopped from competing. As those blocks come down, now there's more people competing for the same resources. You see, not only in America, but as things have gone global, now the entire country, people in every country on the planet are competing. And now, see, this is what you begin to see happening when instead of getting a 700-yard start in a race, you start giving some other people boosts. And when people start actually competing on a level playing field, well then, it ain't so fucking fun. It ain't so fucking easy. It's a lot harder. You begin to see the advantages that you used to have, even if, I mean, the massive advantages and privileges that you used to have, even if you don't want to admit it. And you see, 2019 America ain't so fucking fun. Just because you're born white doesn't necessarily mean everything's going to go great for you. It's going to go better for you on average than anybody else. And again, those are statistics. You can go look them up. But you see, human beings are funny creatures. We are more, and again, you can go research this. Human beings are much more upset about losing even an inch than we are gaining five inches. We don't like to lose things or have things taken from us. So we don't like to lose positions. It's hard to go from being feeling like I'm preeminent just because of who I am to, hey, I'm like everybody else. And God forbid, hey, I'm falling behind. 2019, look, I live in, I live in the wealthiest zip code in the state that I live in, okay? The wealthiest zip code in the state of Indiana. And so it, it's a fluent out here. Let me tell you, when I go into the Whole Foods, when I go to a restaurant with my wife and have lunch or dinner, when I go to get gas, when I go to the gym, wherever I'm going, I go to, you know, God forbid, fast food. The people working behind the counter are now white people struggling. It's no longer so easy. And that shit ain't fun because you see the concept and the value system of white supremacy has taught them that's the, not the way it's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be like that for white people. It doesn't bother people when it happens to others because that's the way it's supposed to be. Black men get shot down by the police with their hands up, choked out, shot with shot even after they told the police, "Hey, I have a legal weapon." All kinds of I mean, just turn on turn on YouTube. You can see it. You have all these people like, "Oh, it's not about race and da 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 da." da and you know, uh, you know, we support the police and all that bullshit. They can't see the problem. Because it's not white people that they're seeing on those videos. It's supposed to happen to others. It's not supposed to happen to white people. And look, if you're trying to say I'm wrong, show me all the videos of all that same type shit happening to white people. Where are they? I guarantee you this. If you, ha if you find them, white people are going to be fucking out of their minds up in arms over them. Just like when a little blonde white girl goes missing. The whole fucking world is like, hey, what uh, what happened to what happened to little Tina Toddy or whatever? Little black girl? Yeah, not so much. Why? Because the value of a white life is is higher. A white life is more valuable under a system of beliefs that says white people are supreme, preeminent superior white lives matter we never needed nobody's ever needed 
<laughs> a, a movement called White Lives Matter. Just like they've never needed a movement called Blue Lives Matter. Because there's never ever in this country been a fucking epidemic of people killing police. Assaulting police. Get the fuck out of here. Everybody knows White Lives Matter. Just like everybody knows Blue Lives Matter. Above all, that's how this system is set up. So when you see this chaos and shit running amok in America, look at who it is. I mean, you can just go look who's running wild. White men in particular. They're the ones who feel like, hey, this shit ain't working for me the way it used to. And I got a problem with that. It, see, if they really believed what they say they believed about equality and, you know, lift yourself up by your bootstraps and all that bullshit, they'd be happy. They'd be happy. They'd say, hey, America's working. I'm not getting any advantage. I'm not getting much. Of it. I'm not getting the same massive advantage as I used to. It's things are becoming equal, but no, they're not. They're saying this is bullshit. I want mine. I want my preeminent position back. I want all of my advantages, all of my privileges back and more. Why? Because they feel that's the way it's supposed to be. That's what the value system of white supremacy preaches. And it's what it has conditioned us to believe, all of us, and taught us to believe. So when you're watching all this shit going down, remember what white supremacy really is. So you can understand how you need to move in this new society. When they show you those raving nuts, lunatics, hollering and screaming about white power and white people are the greatest and get rid of the blacks and the gays and the Mexicans and the whatever. OK, when they show those people to you, they hold them up to you. And then pat themselves on the back about how much they're quote unquote disavowing them. It's easy to do that. Remember, that's a game. That's a trick. It's a bait and switch. That's misdirection. In order to actually get rid of white supremacy, there's a much, much bigger fucking battle to be fought than taking down fucking Alex Jones off. YouTube or deep platforming a few skinheads or cornball white boys on 4chan or 8chan or whatever else. You got to change the heart of this entire American system and society, the heart of its beliefs and values, the heart of its culture. And I'm telling you, when you start talking about doing that, and, and literally obliterating the advantage and privilege that the quote unquote chosen group, AKA white people have enjoyed and still enjoy under that system. Well, you can expect said people to fucking push back. Not all of them, but a whole bunch of them. It's almost understandable. It's kind of human nature. They want to protect something that's worked out for them. That's the real battle and it's going to be a hell of a battle. So just be ready for it. And understand like any great warrior, warrior leader or philosopher or, strate or strategist will tell you. You can't win any battle or any war unless you know who your enemy truly is. I'll see y'all in the next one. We're going to come back to this again. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on it because I know it's going to be a whole lot of blowback from this one. But hey, we can go back and forth. I'm open to people who are, who are you know, you, you got some alternate theory. You got some, some things that can prove what I'm saying is wrong. Present them. I pride myself on being able to change directions when new information is presented to me that contradicts what I've seen as truth before. But let me just tell you, you go back through the whole history of America, I'll put up a thousand dollars right now. Nobody can disprove what I've talked about here at its core because that's 
what America is. As H. Rod Brown said, violence is as American as apple pie. And so, my friends, is the concept of white people being supreme. I'll see y'all in the next one. As always, stay black, stay rich, stay sexy, stay happy, stay smart. Don't ever forget the smart black people credo. Extract the emotion, inject the intelligence, and nobody's going to save us but us. Peace. Thank you for listening to the Smart Black People Podcast with your untamed host, Harpan Ajala. Please get exclusive VIP content, secret high-end wealth-building videos, bonus Q&As and how-to videos, and support our mission to provide empowering, intelligent, anti-coon media content for black people on the rise by going now to www.smartblackpeople.com forward slash rise up. Thank you again. And remember, nobody's going to save us but us.